Businesses around the world are evolving. Every business is moving away from cash transactions into bank transactions. So we are going towards banking systems and we are going towards accounting systems. We want to be as cashless as possible. Guys, welcome to Accounting with Naomi. I want to teach you how you can capture your bank transactions using Sage Business Cloud. Stay tuned. Let's go. All right, guys. So all you have to do now is to log into your Sage Business Cloud accounting. You log in, and as you can see, I'm logged in. It says Request of Production. That is there. You can see my dashboard and everything that is showing right there. Right. So we want to work on the banking. If you check on my dashboard here, it says banking. You have no bank accounts. Set up, add a bank account now, capture your expenses and receipts or set up bank feeds to automatically import your bank transactions. Go to my workplace. So my starting point with banking, I have first of all, I have to add my bank account. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here where it says banking, banking, add bank or credit card. So you select it. Awesome. Right. The bank that I'm using right now, you put the name of your bank. Okay, um, now you also have to say what type it is. You may have check account and you may have savings account, right? I want this to be my check account. So I'm going to say check. Right, so then um, default payment method. Okay, you can select here as well as check. Uh, that name is the name that will, that will be appearing. The very first name that you put, the bank account name, that's the name that will be appearing when you have to select your bank, right? I will show you anyways. Then again, you have to repeat the bank name. So you put the bank name, you put the account number, right, of your bank. If you have your account number, you, you put the account number in there. You put your account number down, right? Whatever your account number is, you write it down. All right, then you put the branch name. Well, it's not really necessary. If you want to put it, you can put it. It's not necessary. Okay, then um, you're opening balance. All right, so I'm going to start a fresh number. Say this company is just new. We're starting from beginning, beginning. So I'm going to have a zero balance. Okay, if you have a balance, you put the balance there. Remember, you also have to go and put this as the opening balance under company. I'm going to show you guys that one later. How to insert your opening balance but you can put your balance here all right so when do you want it this to start from okay so you can put this uh, it's not necessary this date doesn't really matter here you can just put any date there it's not a problem you can also decide to put in the branch code if you want all right all this will not affect much you can put the branch code description is not important and once you have done that you save the bank okay then you can create another one if you have the savings account you can create another one and so forth and so forth remember what i was saying guys the last time that they do give you a tutorial if you are using the menu for the very first time so you can see here there's a few tutorial there welcome to banking click next book overview right it will take me through explaining every transaction you can do that on your own time guys when you start you can i'm just going to jump the um, tutorials for now all right so we can get straight into our video. All right. All that we will jump for now. So we're done. Okay, so here we are and um, my banking. All right. So we're going to start. To do your banking transaction, you first of all have to select the bank, the, type, the bank that you, you, you're dealing with. Remember I said you can have check account, you can have savings, you can have more than one bank account. If you are free. Just create as many as you can. So the one we created, we, we called it FNB check. So I'm going to click on it. Right, you can see there is no transaction in my bank here. Now, let's just look at this very well. Okay. Right. So, here, this is my balance. You can see it's zero. Whatever balance that you have here, when you put your transaction, the balance will start showing at the top here. And this is the number of transactions that you've actually put. So, they tell you transactions. Uh, how many is basically right now there are zero transaction and to be reviewed is nothing. So if you have, for example, 100 transactions and maybe 10 were reviewed, then there, there are 90, which is going to say 90 to be reviewed. All right. So this is where you will see everything that you have. Here's your balance. So basically, um, when dealing with your transaction with Sage Business Cloud, the good thing about it, I can be reconciling at the same time. All right. As I'm putting my transaction, I'm reconciling at the same time. Okay. So why are bank transactions important? Let's stop first. Let's talk about this. Why are bank transactions important? Okay. Number one, the uh, 
bank transaction give us the, the it's the major focus of the business as it is the major transactions of business most of the time now we're dealing with the bank all right so we try to avoid a lot of cash they, although they, we may have cash transaction there and there but the majority of our transaction comes from the bank all right and what do i get from these bank transactions okay i get receipts and payments i get the dates of occurrence of transactions i get the descriptions of the actual transaction that occurred and the amount of transaction all of that comes from the bank account right number two why are bank transactions important it makes up the trial balance right remember we did the trial balance this is where you get your uh, all your debits and credits together all the transactions that occurred all the accounts that are affected in a year within a year or a month whatever you're looking for but usually a year within a year all the transactions and accounts that affected your debit and credits right we then use that trial balance to prepare a financial statement so number two the reason why it is important it makes up the trial balance which is then used to prepare financial statements as you can as you can as you all know fin uh, financial statements are very very important then um, number three, the financial statement is then used to do tax returns, right? We then use our financial statement to do tax return, also to apply for loans and financing and to apply for tender and so many different things that we use financial statement for, all right? And then this will also ensure, number four, it ensures that the company remains compliant because even for my CIPC, I have to give uh, to... to I have to show my, my financial statement amounts to keep up with my CIPC registration. And then for my tax, to pay my tax, um, to pay my my vets and so forth. And so many things that I do. So the company remained compliant. That is why we need bank, uh, our, we need our bank transactions. So you see, guys, it's, it's that important. All right. So here we are. Now, there are different ways that I can do my transactions. All right. Different ways. I can manually do my transaction. As you can see here, there we have the dates. So I can put, for example, let me just make an example. Let's say it's January uh, 2024. All right. So I'll come there. If there's a payee name, we'll put the payee name, for example, who's pay. Uh, let's say I'm making a payment. I'm making a payment to, uh, let's say, Rain. I'm making a payment to Rain. The description is here. I'm paying for Wi Fi. All right. Wi Fi connection. That's my description, all right? So then um, do we have an account with them? If I have an account, I'm just going to select here. But let's say this is just a bank account. I want to select what type of account is affected here. As you can see, this is internet um, in, um, internet that is affected here. So internet is not there. I can use telephone. Yes, there we go. Telephone and internet. That's where it is going to sub, uh, uh, categorize into. And then I come here, I put an amount. Let's say I'm paying 500 all right, so it is a spent because I'm paying. Then I go here. So this is my transaction. This is manually capturing. This is the first way in which you can actually capture your transaction. All right. First way to capture a transaction is to manually capture a transaction. So this is just an example of what I did. Uh, I think I'm going to do um, a video on that as well. So there's going to be a separate video on how to manually capture your transaction. Okay, I did an example with us. That's the first way to do that, all right? Then when you're done, you then save it. All right, I'm going to just save it just for the video for you guys to see what happened. But we started here with a zero balance. We started with a zero balance. And here now, we started with a zero transaction. You can see my transaction is now one, all right? And to be reviewed, right? So if I save it, check what happens. Okay, at the top day, my bank balance changed to 500. And it's a negative because I just started with spend. And we know that we're supposed to start with putting in money first and all that, right? So you see now, so I can automatically be checking. I can just do a bank reconciliation at the same time, although we will a video on bank reconciliation. So if I have my um, statement with me, I can just be checking what I'm doing there at the top and how it is being, uh, um, how it's being updated onto the business cloud right sage business cloud right so you can see we have one transaction and the balance at the top has changed so if you want to delete these guys very simple right um i can just come here oh there are two ways to do that i can select it here you see when you select all these were grayed out right now i can from here mark it as reviewed i can mark it as reviewed see here it says want to be reviewed so if i mark it as reviewed 
check what happened. Zero transaction to be reviewed, right? So again, um, now if I want to work on it, it's no longer going to be on the new transaction. It's going to be on the reviewed transaction. You can see it's now under review transaction and to delete it, I select here and the delete, I can delete here. I can delete there or I can just come here where it says a minus and I can just do there. And are you sure you want to delete? Okay, yes, I want to delete. Anyways, we're going to do a video on this manual capturing later. Right, we are still busy here. So that is the first way that I can capture my banking transactions. Another way to do that is to import my bank statements. All right, so here, this is the option for importing. I can click here, import bank statement. Under import bank statement, it says here, it says import file type. So these are the different file types that you can, but they're usually the main are two right it's either you use ofx or you use csv csv is commonly used because most of the bank uh bank statement actually comes with a csv format okay so you can actually get a bank statement with a csv format all right and then it says standard bank csv net cash csv history csv all right those are the options that you have so it's either ofx or csv now guys i am going to do a video on how to guide you how to import from um, using i uh, uh, using csv or, or ofx i'm going to do a video on that to guide you on how to do that all right so those are the ways you can do that the reason why we do this approach is to save time right so remember the manual capturing if for example i've got 100 transactions it's not a good idea to manually capture it okay it's not a good idea to do that so to save time we end up using the import so actually let's come to a summary why is it important to import bank transactions number one you can deal with many transactions at the same time. Many. So I can actually import the whole hundred transactions. All right. Instead of doing one by one, I can do that. Number two, it reduces data capturing errors. It is very difficult to make errors because I'm taking these straight from the bank uh, um, statements, from the bank statement. I'm just doing a little bit of work on it, but it's the bank statement transactions. So it's difficult to actually leave things out, difficult to make errors. Number three, it reduces time spent on capturing transaction. Of course, and that's what we want, guys. We want to do things smart. We don't want to work hard. We want to work smart. This is part of working smart and also saves me time so I can deal with many clients. As a bookkeeper, if I am to, to capture transactions and I'm wasting time, I'm taking the whole day to capture 100 transactions when I could do this in just 10 minutes. Why not just 10 minutes? Then I can do many uh, capturing for different clients. You see, so you save time and you make more money. You make more money from that. Okay, so that is why it is important to import. Right, so I'm going back again. Um different ways to capture transaction number one manual capturing number two importing and from importing we can either do use the ofx format or we can use the csv format which i want to do a video on them later all right another one which is the most uh, ideal the most ideal that's the one i love the most um it's when you're connecting your bank feeds okay connecting your bank feeds that one, guys, here it says, click here to set up your bank feeds for this account. Click here to find out what bank feeds are and how to save time. So I'm just going to click here, guys. I want us to just go through this. Connecting bank feeds. This is where you automatically connect your bank to Sage. All right. This is an automatic uh, connection. All right. So uh, I think my network or something. Um, it's not popping up, but anyways, I'm just going to explain what it is. Maybe we'll go back and come back later. Yeah, you can see it's still loading. It's still loading. So I'll come back here. We talk about it. Right. So this is where you automatically connect your bank to Sage Business Cloud. And every time there's a transaction, it will come automatically to Sage. So you just have to update. All you have to click is to click the update button and it will automatically appear. I'm going to do a video on that as well to explain to you how you can connect your bank to um Right. So um, connected to bank feeds, like I was saying, it automatically uh, uploads the transactions for you. Guys, it's even better than importing because it's even importing, you're doing some work trying to bring it into a format um, that they want. But with uh, co connecting to the bank feeds, it just automatically comes into your bank and 
uh, all you have to do is just upload and also just um, categorize them. So that's it, guys. That is it. It's it's the easy. I mean, it's the should I say the quickest? Let me not say easiest. The quickest. Of course, it's easy, especially after setting. Setting up is the only time that it will take you time. But later on, it's the quickest way to actually capture your transactions by using bank feeds. All right, connect your bank straight into your Sage Business Cloud. All right, guys. So basically, this is what I wanted to share with you guys in terms of bank transactions. Please stay tuned for more videos coming up on especially the different me um, methods or ways to capture your bank transactions. I'm going to do different videos on that. Please stay tuned. Please remember to share this um this video share it like this video right now uh subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this if you like this kind of video i also do microsoft excel videos i also do accounting videos where we look at um uh, different standards your afres and is standards please stay tuned for more videos all right guys see you on the next video bye